Live from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, it's The Cube. At the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. Now, here is your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the VTUG here at Gillette Stadium. Uh, my name's Stu Miniman, I'm with Wikibon. Uh, we uh, go out to the, all the big enterprise IT events, help extract the signal from the noise. Um, joined for this segment by Paul Brerin, who's the founder of Tinkertry. Uh, I had the uh, pleasure of uh, being introduced by Paul, to Paul by uh, Matt Brender, yes. uh, longtime friend of the virtualization community. Unfortunately, uh, Matt's got a new job, but he's uh, checking it out in uh, Seattle right now, so he, wasn't, he, he was out of town, and I know he's upset that he can't be here, but uh, he's here in spirit with us. He's also one of the geek whisperers uh, and a fellow blogger. So Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, no, it's great to do this, and uh, it's been fun staying in touch with Matt virtually across the country uh, by Twitter. All yeah. He's been quite active this morning, All as right. usual. So, so uh, y y your first time on the program, tell us a little bit about Tinkertry, uh, what it is, and, and what you do. Sure, about three and a half years ago, I was trying to put together a virtualization lab in my home to stay up to date on vSphere, VMware's ESXi hypervisor, and Hyper-V. And I wanted to be able to do it in an efficient fashion where I could leave it running 24 seven. So I had been tired of hand-me-down gear that burned way too many watts, about $1,000 of electricity a, a month We're in Connecticut where I live. So I put something new together and it wasn't being blogged about. I couldn't find good articles that told me what hardware to buy. So I started Tinkertry.com back in 2011. All right, awesome, Paul. So you are VMware certified, you're Microsoft certified, you're also a VMware V expert. Um, you know, what, what's the kind of stuff you play with and uh, you know, what, what do you like getting your hands into? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I play with mostly consumer level gear, so getting to the lower price point. Uh, in my travels, many IT pros ask me, how do I affordably leave something running at home? And what do I buy? So, tended to be about a thousand dollar budget, which can be a challenge, so a Core i7, 16 gig of RAM, maybe 32 gig of RAM, and a RAID adapter, and now for one, or two, one to maybe two grand, you've got yourself a home SAN slash hypervisor you can leave running. So my early articles tended to be about RAID controllers and setting up VMware from scratch. How to do it, step by step. All right, Paul, so uh, you know, how, how, much, how much you know, real estate did you have to carve off here? Is there any you know, tensions at the home as to, you know, boy, the electric bill's uh, <laughs> you know, been going up and uh, you know, would have really liked to do something else with that space in the household. Uh, you know, what, what, what's the reality for the home life? Yeah, I'm lucky enough to have an unfinished uh, basement and basically I was trying to bring down three or 400 watts a month, uh, sorry, burning 24-7, all the way down to under 100 watts. So, no, the impact in the electric bill is way under $100 at this point, and uh, makes it quite easy to spin up VMs that can be left running, like the OpenVPN appliance that I've talked to user groups about, where I use it at a conference like this. If I join the Wi-Fi, I use OpenVPN to encrypt everything I'm doing from my iOS device or my Windows 8.1 device. So those little projects, those things I kick around on evenings and weekends, that's what I enjoy talking about at user groups like this. Yeah, so, so yeah, you're, you're one of those rare breeds, I think uh, Amy Lewis calls it a unicorn. It's like somebody that's actually, they're, they're doing blogging, they're doing it in their free time because they are passionate and love it. Um, you know, how, how'd you first get started in it and then where, where's it brought you? Oh, no, good points. Um, so for many years I've written on internal databases or company databases that come and go. I kind of thought to myself back in the late 2000s, I had finally finished traveling all over the country, trying to meet people in New England and kind of trying to do a brain dump of my own articles to share with people as I met them at user groups like this. So, like many bloggers, you start that way. You want to have a reference or a URL you can forward to someone, a public way to express yourself. And what that has led to recently was um, an IBM Red Books opportunity where I worked on IBM XIV storage and VMware over in Germany for a month. It was a really exciting opportunity. That kind of thing wouldn't have happened if I didn't stick my neck out and put myself out there and just say, I've got to work on my public speaking skills, excuse me, and I've got to work on my public writing skills, and to put all that together, because those are not my comfort areas as a home-based employee for the last five years, I need to put myself out there. 
And that's, that's really my motivation for starting it, and it's been well worthwhile. Yeah, it, it could be a scary thing putting yourself out there at first, but uh, as a friend of mine, uh, Steve Todd, said, when you first hit publish, you never know where it's going to lead. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I, I had great experience, you, you and I have talked about it a little bit, is uh, you know, the opportunity you have, uh, which what we call kind of the outside in. Uh, sometimes you, know, you say, oh, if I start on my day job and I you know, talk to a lot of the people I'm working in, there's only so much of an audience you, you, you can reach. But if I put it out there for the outside, you never know who in the world is going to find that valuable and good content you know, really just finds people and, and, and brings it in. So uh, you, you've been working on, on the blog for a few years. How, how has it changed, matured? You know, what, what, what do you work on these days? Sure, no, absolutely. Uh, the blog, the fine tuning part ended up being the HD videos on YouTube to complement it. So I'll work on a one hour video that shows you soup to nuts how to install ESXi hypervisor and the vSphere appliance on top of it. Basically, the title is build your own data center in about an hour. That's been extremely popular. So, started realizing, wow, okay, YouTube combined with an article to go with it can be a, a powerful thing, and chapter markers and all that. So I got a little more structured in, in my thinking, putting together, realizing, okay, to build a home lab for an hour, it's actually 180 steps. Yeah. <laughs> got to write them somewhere. That's part of the thought process. It formalizes it, and then when a new version comes out, like vSphere 6 coming, February 2nd announcement's coming, you're more ready for it. You have a process going. You've got HD video and, and ready to rock and roll. So for me, a lot of it's been learning the tools, learning WordPress. And what's exciting for me next month is uh, my pages tend to load in three to five seconds when you get past around 50,000 visitors a month, which I surpassed a couple years ago. It gets expensive, this little evening and weekend hobby, to run it at a decent speed. So what I'm excited to do is move away from WordPress, and I'll be blowing the doors off of my current speed it'll be under two seconds to load even the fanciest pages on my site. So keep an eye on me in 2015, I keep refining. I'm always kind of a speed demon at hypervisors and setting up a lab, but also presenting that to the world in a public way. Yeah. I don't want my website to be slow or anything I do to be slow. All right, well, Paul, Paul you're preaching the choir when you say video's an important uh, content uh, hey, way to get things out. Yeah. Uh, to, when, to create a you know, one hour video that, you know, with 180 steps, can you walk us through, you know, what, how long does that take you to do, both the prep and the you know, shooting of the video, and then um, I, I got to imagine you've got a lot of post-processing editing uh, that goes on with that. I do, it's, my videos tend to be almost like a camera's aimed over my shoulder while I'm in a lab, so you're witnessing me doing something that I would be doing anyway in the evening or weekend. Three quarters of them end up on the cutting room floor and never get published because it didn't work or there wasn't value in it. But the ones that are gems are the ones that are almost off the seat of my pants. There's no script when I'm doing that hour video. There is some cutting room activity, some parts are boring because it's just taking four minutes to do such and such. But that process where I'll probably do 10 times building the lab from soup to nuts, including editing it, host files, so you don't need a DNS, simplifying it, making it as few steps as possible rather than complicated so that people would actually embark upon this on half a Saturday on a weekend rather than be too, find it too daunting to ever take on. Once I get the process refined, then I know what I'm going to publish and the actual production of the video, the final cut might take five cuts, probably 10 hours of video, whittled down to one hour. You're right though, it's a one or 200 hour project, but I only do that every two, three, or every 18 months or so. Those big posts where a one hour video takes a while. All right, so, so Paul, I'm sure people out there watching this, boy, that, that's a lot of work. You know, what, what's the return on that for you? Oh. The feedback is constructive, meaning I don't, have, I don't seem to have trolls on my YouTube comments or on my discuss comments that are open to the public Wait, right on my blog. Are you using the same internet that we are? I know. Uh, <laughs> It's not a nasty world on my yeah. site, which is great. I think my articles tend to be more intermediate and advanced users that are in the IT profession. And the comments they're leaving are, did you know the Intel brand of the LSI adapter came out with new drivers last week and it actually allows monitoring in a hypervisor that's reliable. That, that feedback, that helps me make a better article for the next run. Um, that's what I get out of it. The articles and my own comfort in my IT skills are all improved by putting myself out there. So, I have no regrets about deciding to go public with my work a few years ago. It's been nothing but an upshot for me. All right, uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, the, the question is, is there, are there ways to monetize this or is this just a passion of yours that, that you're giving back to the community? Okay, oh, good questions. Um, buy sell ads lets me separate myself from advertisers, so if someone wants to click on buy ads based on the right, they can do that. I don't really want to talk to vendors directly. I blog about what I feel like on the weekends, so they do help me keep the lights on and pay the bills. And um, YouTube videos to a smaller extent as well. Uh, not as much as, you know, cute puppies or kittens, um, 
But yes, the longer video of an hour, having oh, you know, many people watch it is exciting for me to realize I've made, in, in the comments you get, hundreds of comments sometimes in the more popular videos, you're making a dent across the globe, and that just feels good. It's addictive, like any hobby, but I try to keep it in control, and I try to stick with articles that I'm writing that no one else has ever written. If I've already read it somewhere, I'll point to there, send a Google Plus or a tweet about it. I'm not going to reinvent it, right, just for clickbait. clickbait. I'm just going to try to keep sticking with articles that are truly unique, something I figured out and had an aha moment and quite enjoy sharing with the world. All right, so, so Paul, uh, last thing I want to ask is what, what, what's exciting you these days, either the virtualization space or uh, you know, some of the other technologies that, you, that you've been playing with? Caching, so when I said LSI RAID controllers is one of them, that is OEN by many brands. Yeah, and of course, you, you talk, caching has nothing to do with money, it's about the Correct. storage caching. Yes, and using SSDs in your home lab, so three and a half years ago when I started the site, that was a little pricey to do. Now, if you can get an M.2 SATA card for one terabyte, well, we're not quite there yet, or at half a terabyte, but my laptop has a terabyte in it now for under $400, not such a big deal anymore. So my virtualization lab, I'm pretty much done with spinny drives. I'll get a six terabyte for some backups, but for where all my VMs are going to live, I don't want to wait for nothing. I don't even need a cache. Reads and writes are on the SSD for the VMFS data store, you're good. But even those backups, I back up 10 to 12, maybe even 14 friends and family laptops that are not even in my house. They're coming in over VPN and doing a daily differential backup to my mothership, my ESXi-based server. I want SSD caching even for that. So I'm always about speed and trying to find something that's affordable for someone who's IT certified. Some of these companies make that a lot cheaper, meaning they'll give you NFR code or more than just a 30-day time bomb to try it. So that's where being, becoming a V expert in 2014 really empowered me to get my hands on more code than I had a chance to before. All right, uh, Paul, I want to give you the last word here. Where can people find more about what you're doing, connect with you, and uh, you know, contribute more to the community? Yeah, absolutely. Tinkertry.com in the upper right corner, you've got all the colorful icons to follow me on Google Plus and Twitter. I'm most active on those two areas. Google Plus, do you work for Google? <laughs> no, but I find it's good technical discourse there. That you've got screenshots, you can send up decent media. Twitter I find very constraining. So I have something a little more to say that's not quite a a full-blown article, but it's way more than a tweet. I tend to use Google+. Yeah, uh, it, it, I totally agree with you. There, there's a lot of use case for Google+. I do use it. It's, of course, excellent for SEO, um, and you can have kind of that mid-level uh, conversation. Uh, be interested to see as video rolls out on Twitter more natively, that could be some interesting opportunities for people that leverage video like yourselves and like us. Um, all right, Paul, really appreciate you joining. Uh, great to be able to you know, share with the community uh, things that you're doing, and uh, you know, it's really places like this that help uh, you know, the, the, the IT folks really understand what's going on uh, you know, much more uh, than you know, just, just reading some of the manuals and trying to figure out everything on their own. So thank you for helping to you know, drive the path forward, and uh, so glad you can join us here at the VTUG. We'll be right back with our next guest after a quick break. Thanks for joining.